Hey everybody, so I saw most of you in class today. I've been working on this updating the uh, lecture slides based on what we did today and some other stuff for like the last three hours. So I just said, okay, I got to record it. So this is a little bit different than was originally posted and it all was based on what we discussed today. Uh, so we're, I'm going to talk about the stuff we did in for the Johnson text because there is a lot of changes. Uh, and I sort of narrowed the assignments for this week. Um, you, could, you all can thank Zach for that. Zach uh, talked to me and wanted me to do that. So everybody thanks Zach because otherwise it was going to be like 10 things you had to read. Actually, I think it was 12 and now it's just four. So thank him. Buy him a beer. So uh, here's the updated agenda. So I did change this uh, to match the changes. Uh, mostly, um, there were some changes to the project. You know, it's it, you're all combined into one team now. We've got a uh, project planning document. You have some assignments. I'm going to go over that now. Uh, we've got two every two weeks. We're going to report out and we're going to talk about it the week between. So, um, and we did a lot of um, should we say testing today? And <laughs> my shoulder still hurts. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, you guys can reach out and share, but I, my shoulder still hurts from when I lifted the elliptical uh, with the straps. <laughs> that was, okay, so make sure you guys are talking to each other um, outside of class. Oh, and the other thing too with the assignment, and um, we'll talk about this next week too, and I probably should apologize to Dakota. Um, he kind of caught me off guard about how many hours we should put into this per week. And the reason I reacted the way I did, and again, I'm sorry, is that you know I'm working two jobs, um, volunteering in like four different capacities. I'm still doing stuff at you know at home. I've got a family. I've got kids. Um, not really taking care of myself, but I always put myself last. Um, but I'm still you know submitting proposals to speak at conferences and participating in webinars and helping people out. So um, that that caught me off guard. But but I I shouldn't assume you guys are just like me. So. I apologize and we'll talk about it. So what I'm thinking is if you guys can put in about two hours per week on this project, I think that would be um, very much appreciated. I think that would get the project done. So again, sorry, Dakota. Didn't mean to be like that. Uh, so you got the stuff here. So it's going to be doing your uh, the material handling project. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I'm, I'm spending way too much time in this. There are four things I want you to read. One is a web link to CDC. I want you to kind of review it, summarize it, the other articles. I think the longest one is 40, but I'm not expecting you to read it word for word. I'm expecting you to kind of focus on what is the lesson? What's the story? What's you know, what's the, the main thing they're trying to get across regarding what we need to do as safety professionals to assigned value to our recommendations because we need management to approve them. And I'm going to talk about, you know, something I experienced, but that's what this is about. And so I've narrowed it to these four and I'm going to talk about the other ones and then keep doing your LinkedIn stuff. And next week we're going to do the course binder and I'll finish with that. So here's some pictures from today. So we tried this uh, sort of shoulder harness uh, lifting straps and we tried the uh, orange ones and then um, Tommy like went off and combined them and that was really that was a cool thing Eric was really impressed by that but we also we realized um, these lifting straps probably aren't going to be the solution now my other shoulder hurts um, and so we started looking into different types of technology we could use because it's it is 500 plus pounds um, and for two people that's too much so if we could place something with wheels or something that could slide and something that can go up and down stairs, um, what we can do is not have to lift between two people 500 pounds, but maybe just lift 200 pounds or 150 pounds with straps or something like that. So anyway, I think there are a lot of options. I just, these are some of the ones I searched. So these would go up, up and down stairs. Um, this one is actually more expensive. It actually has some mechanics to it. Um, this one has like a tread to it that I just kind of caught that. I'm like, that's kind of cool. This one is just a simple slider. So we want to be able to utilize some sort of technology that will handle a majority of the work for carrying the load. But then the other two you know, or the two people who are going to be carrying it will probably still use some form of strap or some kind of lift. Um, and then they can guide it in. 
But then again, if we run it like through the yard, will it pick up mud and then bring mud in the house? And so there, there's a lot of issues. Again, 500 pounds is way too much to lift and I can't believe they're doing it. And Chase is going to be getting us the um, work comp data. He also commented after you guys left that um, the people who do this job don't do it for very long. And I wonder why. I will be posting the videos that I took. I see all the videos. I downloaded them, but again, it was three hours just to update this presentation and, and change the whole uh, assignments for this week, but I will post them very, very soon, I promise. Here is the project, and we did some assignments here. So for Joe and for Colleen, um, we need to assign you some of this stuff, but these are the things that we're gonna try to get done in the next two weeks, and we could use help pretty much in all of these. Um, we're really going to try to establish, you know, what is the main issue, and and we're going to adopt some kind of risk assessment or ergonomic assessment um, to say, okay, the way they do it now, this is the the risks involved, and then as we come up with ideas of what we could use and doing pros and cons on what might work or maybe not work, um, we'll we'll try to assign to see how much we can reduce what those injury risks might be. And Eric did say that he, you know, if we come up with a really good idea, he may try to acquire it for us and then we could test it. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do is we're just trying to make continuous progress on this and to use that um, the DAIMC approach. I think that's what it was. Uh, so we can be more like scientific, you know, I think it's a 5S or a some whatever uh, Six Sigma approach. And so I want you guys to be, we got the project management, we're using a real life project, which I think is really cool. Um, and we're using um, the Six Sigma, I think that's what it is, or 5S, whatever, approach. These are all good things for you as you go into your careers. And we're also one team now. We had four teams, everybody there voted, you're all one team. And so therefore, I think more hands make less work. Is that the term? So good, good on you guys for rec recommending that. Uh, just uh, not too long ago, Chris Gomez shared this assigned list. And this, if it's not already posted, I'll post it to Canvas. So each person, each student was assigned three moving companies to, um, I don't know why that says two students each. Two students each. It's three each. But anyway to uh, look into these groups, reach out and talk to them because I want to know what, you know, these companies, they, they, they have people moving things every day and they have to be moving really heavy, awkward things like exercise equipment, like pianos, like safes, like refrigerators. And what are they using? You know, are they just manually just brute forcing it or are they using some for some type of, you know, lifting tool or, or lifting straps or what is it? We don't know. And so I think assessing what is actually being done in the world is a really, is good. Um, try that out. And what we talked about in class is introduce yourself as a UW-Whitewater safety student. You're doing an ergonomics project for a class on effective or innovative equipment and or strategies for uh, moving things. And um, the worst they can say is no. <laughs> Don't take it personal. Just thank them for their time. Um, but try to ask for a description of, you know, you know, what is their lift plan? You know, how do they how do they figure this out? How do they come across the equipment they use? How much does it cost? And what are their overall experiences with it? Just do the best you can, you know? I, I think it'd be as students, if you play it by, you know, I'm a student, I'm trying to learn, you're more likely to get people to say, sure, I'll talk to you. Or hey, this person's in tomorrow, I'll let them know and you can reach out to them. It, it, I think it's it's good and it's good for you too to find ways to get solutions. We might go to LinkedIn too. Maybe we'll make use of LinkedIn too. Uh, we'll see. All right. So why are we doing this? Why you know? Because it would be so much easier if I just kind of made up little case studies or we went on tours and did OSHA audits. Here's the thing. Um, sure, those are good and nice, but I think one of the biggest complaints I see from um, people out in the world is that, oh, students, all they know is OSHA compliance. And I agree. I think we have to become more innovative and be willing to take on problems and use innovative techniques for reaching resolution of those problems. And the reason Eric approached me is he, he read an article like this. It's not this one. That um, UW-Madison, their engineering school, is constantly collaborating with industry 
to come up with solutions. And then they get, you know, they get recognition and stuff like that. I did the same search for UW Whitewater and got nothing. <laughs> nothing. This, which is why this is so important to me. Um, I, 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 and I hope you guys see the importance to you. Um, too much of the work we do in our classes is, you know, just like, hey, this little thing. And you go through like a mental exercise. This is real. I mean, I've got the sore shoulders to, um, to show for it. To really challenge yourselves to analyze a real problem and design solutions. I mean, I can't, I I want this to work because I want this to be sort of a a starting point for a change in this course and a change for the curriculum we have in this program. I want to just brag from the mountaintops that you guys kicked ass on this project, and I want you guys to be able to brag to future employers of what you had done. Um, I think it's pretty fantastic, and so, you know that I. I I'm, I'm, I'm in, you know, I want to help you as much as I can, but I want you to learn the process and actually practice it versus just talk about it. So I hope you, I hope you agree with me. So I started my own stuff and I'll be sharing this as we go. Uh, I'm starting to document what I'm thinking about, how I'm defining the problem, all that stuff, trying to use this process, D-M-A-I-C, I think I said it wrong before. So make sure you guys are documenting all aspects of the work you're doing. And by the way, this will help with your binder. Um, so we're going to be getting some more information this week. We want to have a, it'd be nice if we could communicate with, because um, Chase works with Eric, use Chase as sort of our um, intermediary or facilitator and um, evaluate as much as we can about um, issues that the these delivery, assembly and delivery people have gone through what they've tried, what hasn't worked, other issues. Because I'm going to talk about it in a little bit here that we want to maybe look at Johnson Tech's um, like corporate plan or corp like annual goals and stuff like that and just see if we can find out how this project may contribute to a corporate goal or a corporate policy. And that would help out Eric too because he's taking a big risk in um, including us, especially since last fall we tried this and womp womp didn't get there. And again, I'm proud of you guys. Today we learn more than they did all of last <laughs> all last year on this project. Just by using the equipment, on the equipment, putting together a plan, we were, oh man, my back is still short. I gotta go take some medicine right after this. So that that's that. So we'll keep working on this and discussing it. So let's get to it. So originally you were gonna have to read this 150 page report. Um, on it's called the business case for safety and health at work cost benefit analyses interventions in small media. so this is a great paper it's too long for you to read so I'm going to summarize some of the highlights here um, and what I learned from this and the reason I chose it is that if you had me for 483 and we do the work comp analysis I, for a long time I've been operating under the assumption that every safety case study and proposal needs to have an ROI, return on investment. You know, I'm asking for this investment for the solution, but this is what we're going to prevent from happening. Therefore, you'll make the money back in, in some period of time. We estimate those things. But what I've come to learn is that there are other values. Sure, um, you can't just say, hey, invest a million dollars. I don't know if it's going to work. But um, sometimes what you can do is you can pilot test and maybe do something smaller that's less expensive to see if it'll work. And then they'll invest the big money. Or you you try to show, well, this is the, what we've been doing. And if we switch to this other one, we can possibly get either these savings or this additional value. What do I mean by that? And this paper talks about it too, is that if we can improve the operations that make money, if we can reduce the cost of, of production or everyday business, if we can reduce waste, that saves money. There's, there's a lot of aspects that go into work, which is why um, I think it's, and I even talked to Eric about this after you guys left, that um, we don't want to be reporting to HR. We want to report to operations or plant management because they are very keen on where all of their cost centers are and where their revenue centers are and how it affects profit. They're very keen to that. And if safety is viewed as just a, you know, a, a money drain and it doesn't add anything to the value of the company, then you're never going to be successful. 
And we and so therefore that's what we have to pursue. All right. So, you know, why do we only refer to refined set as value? Well, because that's really, I mean, when it comes down to it, if you go to any of the um, company business meetings, they, they forecast sales and they forecast growth and they forecast what sort of market uh, share they can gain through new products or changing of products, things like that. And then it goes to operations and says, how are you going to meet these um, projected sales? And you have to look at uh, your equipment and your people and what is the conversion rate and all that stuff. And all in all, put all together, if we can make these many things to, to meet the anticipated sales and growth goals, we anticipate this will be the profit. Now, once we know or estimate what the profit might be, B, we now have have a basic idea of how much wiggle room we have or how much we could invest to get to that point sooner than where we are now. And right now, um, there's been a lot of stress at the plan I'm working because they're working on next year's um, budget requests based on anticipated sales. And what I've learned just over the last 10 months, man, these... these um, uh, forecasted sales go up and down and they try the best they can to go, okay, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. And they try to look at um, major market influences. Um, but sometimes they forget that um, there is a limited capacity. People cannot be working at 100% all the time. And so um, what happens when people are pushed beyond their limit, something else has to give. And um, so that's what I've learned. So we, we need to show the value, what safety can do to help um, make, be, maybe reduce uh, errors, reduce downtime, reduce, oops, um, keep workers a little bit happier. Yeah, there's all kinds of things we can do. Uh, and so it goes into, you know, when is a, when is something profitable? And I kind of breezed over it, but um, I might attempt to get you all access to one of our operations meetings so you can hear it directly. Um, and I mean, the best thing about this experience I've had, and I've kidded that the second job is like a fantasy camp, a safety fantasy camp, um, is I've learned so much about business while being there, while contributing to it. And so it's it, I've been challenging myself to utilize the lessons I give in the class, but what they're doing is they're really refining the things I teach you guys. And um, I'm really happy about that, I am. So potential costs of loss, that's really what it comes down. We wanna prevent injuries, we wanna prevent equipment failure. Sure, we can talk about fines and penalties, but it's not big a, that big a deal. We want to make sure we're not losing production. That that is one of the biggest things. Honestly, that's what they talk about. Um, we don't want to damage reputation. So if there's something that could be catastrophic, we need to get on. Just the other day, um, our um, exhaust flare or incinerator, so that we don't aren't like giving off like heavy particulate or any gases, broke down. And, but they still ran the oven, and therefore the um, exhaust from the plume w was more visible than when it's incinerated, and I could see it kind of wafting over and creating a haze to the south of the building. And I just let them know that you're going to get calls. You know, neighbors are going to call. The neighbors are going to call the city, and the city is going to call us. So we need to make a decision here. Are we going to keep running the oven and risk that? Or are we going to shut it down and fix it so we don't have that problem? So there's a lot of, every, and I had said you in class, there are so many, you know, you come in with the best intentions each day, but something always comes up. So the, the paper goes into all kinds of different areas, you know, and really thinking about it that safety, sometimes there is, well, we got to purchase the equipment and then, but we also need to install it and maintain it and train people on it. And it may have a, an actual effective life cycle. It may only be good for a year or six months or whatever, whatever it is, we need to define what those things are. So same with this project here. Are we going to slow down the delivery? Or are we going to speed it up? Are we going to reduce the chance of damaging the equipment or the customer's um, home? Or are we reducing that? Um, is it possible that 
you know, we're going to be able to hopefully, you know, reduce the risk of injury and different types of injuries. Um, or are we creating problems? Like I thought of the, uh, the harness thing today. Well, what happens when it's wintertime? They can't fit those over their coats. And we can't have them go outside when it's, you know, negative degrees to put on a harness. We have to think of all things, all seasons, all conditions, and see what we can figure out here and do the best we can to hit a majority of them, okay? Um, otherwise, they're just going to keep, you know, manhandling it. Is that a term? Brute forcing it. So here's a, here's a list of different things, and I, I think I've hit on a lot of these, but we need to think beyond just preventing injuries and safety. That'll make us more effective. That makes us sound more credible. And I think we're more likely to get management support if we speak that way. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, ultimately, management makes the decisions. And so we also need to align our recommendations with their goals, with their objectives, within their budgets. And so sometimes we have to prioritize. Um, it's not always the best. If something could kill somebody and it needs to get done, we have to maybe call in all favors and say, you got to trust me on this. We got to get this done. And then um, that gets done. But then there's other little things. Well, what can we do you know, in the meantime to kind of keep things going and maybe study things a little bit more or pilot test something that's less expensive? That's our role. We do the best we can, but rarely do we have unlimited funds and access to perfect responses. It's a lot of trial and error. I'm sorry. That's it's sad to say, but that's really how we operate. As far as the justification, so they say the business case, and that's what this all comes down to. Um, we need to evaluate more than just a uh, the prevention of an OSHA penalty or the costs associated with an injury. There's a lot more we need to be involved with. But I fear that if we're only reporting to human resources, that that may be all we think about. But there's so much more. This paper gets into it. The other thing is we need to be accurate. And when we're not accurate, we need to, be, need to have conservative estimates. If you've taken 43 with me, you've heard me say that. Um, it's best to use internal data, which is why when we were meeting today, I asked Eric, could we get a copy? He thinks there's like 50 or 60 um, claims of things that we can look through. And he said, you know, they're not all lifting related. There's slip ships and falls and other things. Let's let's try to get as much information as possible. And we may not get it on the first try. We may have to ask for accurate or conservative estimates. I, I meant to say conservative estimates. Um, realize too that if we get a bunch of comp data, uh, injury data, it's going to be skewed by the most expensive or the most severe. I talked about that just this morning in the... Uh, the quarterly uh, work comp update meeting I was in, median numbers are better because of their 50th percentile, but really we just need to look at the data overall. Again, that's what I taught in 43. Another thing is we need we should have comparisons. Um, consider your quest based on all factors, including how long it could last. So comparison to things, to other things, and that may help management better understand, especially if it's a complex ask. It's good to have... Um, documents or plans like this. Um, this is one that goes out from year zero to year four, so a multi-year payback or a multi-year of development. Um, these are good too. I don't recommend any one, but you may come across one. Or maybe Johnson Tech has one. I mean, we're starting out with a project plan. We'll see where it goes. But you definitely need to define the issues within the context of the current costs for what we know and assess potential loss. And be honest. Be honest about everything you do, which is why documentation is super important. Eric said it would be a success if we tried 10 things, all 10 things fail, or don't meet you know, the full need. He can take that to management. Look what we learned. Let's keep moving forward. You know, Within the time frame we had and the access to things we had, this is the best we can do. You don't always have to have an answer and hope it works. Honesty is better. So are we going to do a proposed cost-benefit analysis or are we going to look at value-based? I'm asking, let's do value-based because when we present our ideas to management, it is a sales pitch. It is. Um, and if you approach it that way, you think of it differently. You word it differently. You know, you want them to trust you first and then believe that this will work, that this is a value to the company versus 
here's the problem, here's the issue, and expect them to figure it out. Nope, nope, they don't have time. You have to relate to them and relate it to the work they do. I hope that makes sense. It will. <laughs> so let's review a, a proposal that I had recently. Actually, it was back in August. I was approached and asked to find out if a couple of new vendors could be brought in, would they be of value to us? So I spent a lot of time inviting different groups in, giving them a tour, uh, collecting and analyzing the last 18 months of funds spent on different safety related things, and then asking them to do a comparison study, and then I put everything together. My basic estimate, and this is a very conservative low estimate, is that we could save about uh, you know 12000 something plus in the first year, given even though it's startup and everything else, and that doesn't include the additional services and training, which was what I was more excited about over this whole thing. So I did a comparison between this group and that. That So over here, these are the ones we currently use. Um, and this is a breakdown of the individual um, cost benefit. So first, we currently use a service that comes in. He kind of looks at things. He stocks things. But he can never give me a detailed itinerary of what he replaced and from which boxes. If I knew that, then I would know who's not reporting first aid responses to me because I know there are more happening than what I'm hearing about and I need to find out what's going on. So that's that that was an easy one. A little bit of cost up front, but overall would save us money and would be a more accurate representation of what's going on. So this is what we're currently paying per month on average. Again, I had about a year and a half of data. And over the past year, it's about 8,000. Now, if you look at the startup fees, um, sure, the startup fee may be about you know, 5,000 or something. But once we get going, it would then begin to save money. And with, again, within the first year, I think we'd start saving money. And it would also give me um, another data point by which to track the performance of the safety program by having a more accurate representation of first aid. We also pay Aramark for um, our uniforms for maintenance and engineering. Um, and Cintas comes in less expensive, better service, and can take care of our electrical glove service, which is something we have to do, but right now we have to do too much of it, and therefore it's costing us a lot. So there's that. Then we get these dirty rags. These are actual rags we buy and use. Sometimes it looks like people left their underwear or their laundry on the floor. Uh, but if we went through Cintas, it'd be better. They would recycle the ones we had to. We could throw away the others. It, it, big savings there, straight up and down. Um, you can't see this as good, but I compared our current um, audiogram uh, provider against this new one in which I would manage it more, and it is savings up and down. Even better savings than if we sent workers from our plant to our clinic and back. Savings there. So this one, it, it, this this was basically this was a no-brainer. And so this is just me pointing out that over the years, we're just going to continue to save. I, I, I knew we were spending too much. I'm sorry you guys can't see these. I thought it looked better when I was building it. So this is our current provider of PPE. This is who I'd like. Um, I did prices and overall even, and look, this is one. So there was, this is before I came in. This is when I came in and this is another quarter. So you can see based on the previous year. Now this is actually prices increased. So this would actually come down, I believe, what's the amounts here? Uh, well, it's, it's anywhere from 2.6% to 16%. So that's, that's what we're paying in extra. So I'm, I'm saving them money, but um, it's because I'm being very thrifty with what I'm doing. So my proposals all were initially accepted because they asked me to look into it. I did all the work I had to. I'm like, here are the contracts. And then it got to forecasting. And because there is an enormous capital project coming in next year, they put a hold on all of my things except for the um, Cintas uniforms, the Cintas uh, cleaning regs and the examinetics hearing conservation. So I'm going to miss out on the first aid and the, um, the vendors with the PPE. I'm, 
the, the, it's just, I'm upset. I don't know. Okay, what do you guys have to do? So I'm going to cover one more thing here quick before I get to this. Sorry, I'm really just still frustrated. Uh, man. So here's the business case. Again, it is 150 some pages, but keep this. You know, you may want to refer to it when you're in your internship. This is like an international paper. Pretty cool. Uh, one thing I try to teach in 483 is if you do want to get some costs associated with injuries, go to the Department of Workforce Development. Um, but sometimes the stuff is housed at the State Laboratory for Hygiene. Here's highlights for 2020. That's not what I wanted. Let's look at the 2020 numbers. And can I zoom? So but the, here's the problem though. These, these are obviously um, biased or skewed because the more expensive claims drag out the average. So you can see these averages, um, they're actually pretty high compared. These are also indemnified, which means uh, some wages were paid. But I, what I did is I went through and collected a bunch of this data to find out how far off it is. And so this is what I found. So I've got years, well, I could add a few more years now that it goes up to 2020. I did this several years ago. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight years worth of data here from that chart. And what I did is I just pulled the information from a source and a nature perspective and just wanted to see what the averages are, where they all lie. Um, and I also looked at counts. So again, this is just for Wisconsin. And these are just more of the, not the more common, the more frequent, the more severe. Yeah. And then what I did is I compared it to some of the data that I've been analyzing um, in my 43 class and things you can find online, such as the NCCI um, and OSHA pays. And what's interesting is, I mean, just these numbers. So demo with outliers, demo without. So these are my more accurate numbers. And you can see here difference between my demo versus with. Right there, there's also a change. But you know, my numbers are a lot lower. Why? Because when you remove outliers, they're more accurate. It's more representative. And you see how much lower they are. So DWD is 10,000, I'm getting 2,500. They're saying 11,000, I'm saying 4,000. They're saying 11, I'm saying seven. So in some areas, they're closer. Others, they're pretty far away. But also, it's really difficult to get them to match up. But I should expand on this and maybe I could make it a presentation for like a conference or something, write a paper on it, I don't know. But it just shows how skewed a lot of this data here. Here's my demo. And I, what I could do is go through and average a lot of my stuff. It's just so much, well, yeah, the, yeah these are gonna be similar because these are both my demos. But I could go through and, and do this and it's just, you know, it looks like, is it strains? That's not too bad, is it? Or 100%? Yeah, it is. Look at, it's way off. Look at OSHA pays and NCCI. They're way skewed. They represent the highest of the high. And yeah, again, between, I don't like to use nature of injury. I like to use accident source. So that's just me kind of just showing off some stuff. All right, let's get back to the presentation. Please don't. Yeah, it always does that. We're almost done. So here's the four papers you have to read. So the first one is a CDC. This is actually a website. Um, you just got to click around a little bit and see what they say about it. This is for economic evaluation. This is good. The other, there's two from the Journal of Safety Research, one on a productivity assessment tool, and the other is, is effectiveness of ergonomic interventions, and then the ROI of EHS through the uh, Bureau of something something. Um, review these, summarize them. And, you know, what'd you learn as far as what are things you can bring with you to, you know, complete a value assessment for a case study? That's what I want you to do. So summarize like a paragraph on each and then surmise, you know, what you learned from the four papers. Next week, uh, you guys are going to, I'm going to review your course binders. And so what do the binders look like? It can be either electronic or it can be a paper you choose. Um, first of all, collect all the work you've done so far and then organize it. So what I had wanted to see is a planning document. So you should have some goals and it doesn't have to be just for this class. Actually, I don't want it to be just for this class because we were preparing for the career fair. We've been using LinkedIn. So, you know, goals. I wanted to expand my professional network. Um, one way is LinkedIn. Another is to go to meetings. 
Um, I want to make sure I get in all of my um, course assignments on time, and so therefore I'm going to lay them all out, things like that. Tracking, I want to know, are you accomplishing the things you're setting out for yourself? Uh, if, you, if you're accomplishing everything, then you're not setting your goals high enough. <laughs> there should be some points where I just couldn't get this done, but I really want to do it. You know, it, that's how you really push yourselves. Um, if you haven't already been doing the journal and reflection, please do that. It should be just, you know, this is what I did this week. This is what I'm getting done. Uh, how did things go? Um, I, you know, in my other position, I do journaling every day as a way to kind of track what I'm doing, who I'm meeting with, things like that. Earlier on, it was much more detailed. Each day I had two to three pages. Um, and then at the end of the week, I would reflect and look back. That's how I really got things rolling there. But then as I become super busy and I'm not there as much, I don't get to use that tool as much. And I definitely see that uh, my ability to stay on top of things has slipped. I would like to get back to that point, but I'm just, I'm running on triage right now. Class notes, again, these are the things you guys have been writing down, whether it's for assignments or whatever, but um, it would be good if you could kind of organize those. Any work you do on your case studies and then eventually the case study reports, that should be in another section. And then it all should be organized. So if you were to like bring it to an interview, and consider next week an interview if you want. Um, you know, you asked me, um, how can I handle this job? Well, let me show you how... I um, handled my work when I was in school. You know, that's what it's about. Um, and it's fun to look back when you do something like this. And you can see how far you've come. So that's what the binder's all about. You have to do it for the internship, for the capstone. And I like to practice it now. So then when you get to the capstone internship, it's not like you're at that point trying to figure this out because you already did it in a &D. That is, I believe, everything I had for you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. But again, I modified what was expected for this, this week's assignments and lecture today based on what we talked about. Um, we'll be in the classroom next weekend. Uh, sorry, next weekend, next Wednesday. And we'll have some stuff to do in class while I'm reviewing the binders. Um, yeah, so again, I'm proud of you guys today. Um, we learned a lot, even though, again, my shoulders are, are sore. I got to go take some Advil after this. Um, but try to carve out time in your schedule and try to really commit to this and be passionate about it like I am. Um, it's going to benefit you. It's going to benefit me. It's going to benefit Eric and Johnson Tech. And maybe more importantly, it'll benefit, if we do it right, um, benefit uh, the program and the college because maybe we can brag for once. That would be awesome. Instead of me bragging, I brag anyway. All right. Thanks, everybody.